Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. And this is the 1000 subscriber special. And this is a very special video, not only for you guys, but also a very special video for me because I've been planning this one for quite a while. I've decided for the 1000 sub special to come to my parish. This is the parish of Saxelby with Ingleby. This is where I grew up. I spent the first 20 years of my life living around this part of rural Lincolnshire. And I've decided to start this video outside the very first house that I lived in. For the first 14 months of my life, I was a resident of Crown Farm Cottages right here in Ingleby. And there they are. They are Crown Farm Cottages. Now, obviously at the age of 14 months old, I don't remember them very well. What I do remember though, is the village of Saxelby where I spent the, the remainder of the 20 years I've just spoken about. I lived in four different houses in the village and in a moment, I'm gonna drive down into Saxelby and we're gonna have a tour like normal, like a normal parish video of the entire village. But there'll be one massive difference and that will be that in this one, I'm gonna be speaking to the camera a lot more. So it's an hour long. Settle yourself in. This is the parish of Saxelby with Ingleby. moving from Ingleby when I was 14 months old we lived in four houses in the village and the first of them is behind me right now number 11 Queensway and this is where we're gonna start our main walk around the village so I lived on this street for a good I don't know it must have been a good 10 years I can remember being 10 or 11 when we moved to our next house now Queensway is very close to one of the village's main sort of attractions. And that's where we're heading now. Towards the end of this road, there's a canal called the Fosdyke. quite a lot of boats on the canal this morning but seeing them here is a regular occurrence having uh, lived in Queensway literally just a few paces away I saw them every day to most people this would be a, a novelty I think unless you live in an area similar but seeing canal boats on the Fosdyke is uh, 
it's quite normal for me. Okay, so I haven't been here for a long time. I am expecting to see a lot of things in and around the village that are different to how I remember them. And certainly one of the things is Tony Arbor Butchers because that place never used to be a butchers. That used to be a DIY shop called Tong's DIY. And my dad used to work in that shop. Certainly for all the time that we lived in Queensway, that was his job to work for Albert Horton at Tong's DIY. And apparently it's now a butcher's. How times change, eh? Right, here's another building that's changed its use apparently. I'm on the corner of Bridge Place and behind me is a pizza restaurant. Now that used to be a hairdresser's. It was owned by a woman called Kathy and it was called Way Ahead. And uh, my mum used to go there to uh, get her hair done on a regular basis. And I think, if I remember rightly, I think I've had my hair cut in there before too. Behind me is the Sun Inn, one of the village's main pubs. There are a couple others. There used to be one, literally, just next door. Just there, that's the, uh, that's the ship, or what was the ship. It's obviously now been converted into a house. These public toilets have always been here. But those houses you can see behind the ship, they're new. I'm certainly not used to those, so yeah. Things certainly have changed since I was last here. But there used to be five pubs in the village. And that there was the ship. Right next to the sun. Right, now I'm on the other side of the Fosdyke. Now, I used to sometimes come over here just for a quiet moment if I needed some peace. There's a nice place to sit. There used to be some benches just here, just next to the, the bridge. Uh, they appear to have been moved a little bit further down here, look. If I just walk along this path a little bit further. This seating area 
used to be a little bit further behind me but they've obviously changed this a little bit to make it into more of an actual seating area it was a little bit informal before and uh, now it seems like it's more a touristy place with all the boats and things I can understand that whereas before it just used to be a, a nice place just to come and sit and actually they've uh, they've put some information boards here too I'll take some pictures of these it'll be interesting to see if there's anything on here that I don't know that I'll be able to include in the video Now, I was going to take one of these, but <laughs> there are none left. I'm hoping there's another one of these uh, dispensers somewhere around the village. So the hairdressers that I mentioned earlier appears to have moved next to Magpie Fabrics over there and this shop here which says the Lincoln Equitable Cooperative Industrial Society on it that for a long time was a charity shop but that seems to be um, a barber shop as well now. When I lived here, there used to be two chippies in the village. One of them still exists, it's called Smithy's, and it's up near the station. But there used to be one here, next to the uh, charity shop that I've just been talking about. There used to be one just there. That used to be called Trev's. And honestly, to be honest with you, I thought that one was the better of the two. So, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, I know it's subjective, but certainly when I lived here, that one was the one I always favored. So one thing I do know about the village, even though I've not lived here for a while, is there have been quite a lot of new developments, new housing developments built. And this one is certainly one of those. Canal Court, this never used to be here. This used to be um, a business, a, a big warehouse. It was called Limpave. Um, and then Limpave left that and it became uh, ROC Oil or Rock Oil. I could never work out whether it was ROC or whether it was called Rock Oil. There was no K on the end, you see. Um, so for a long time, this was a big industrial warehouse unit. Uh, obviously now it's been knocked down. And uh, while I'm here as well, next door to Canal Court is this little low wall. I'm just gonna come across the road here because you get a better shot from this way. Now, behind that low wall, that also used to be something as well. There used to be a, a pharmacy there. Now, while I lived here, that did move while I was here. So that's not new to me. The pharmacy now is up near the co-op, which we'll see in a bit, in a bit. There used to be a pharmacy there, 
and I can remember as a kid where every time I needed a doctor and I needed something from the pharmacy we used to go to the surgery which is at the very far end of the village and then come down here and I'd always get a lollipop from the uh, from the counter because they used to have a little um, tub full of lollipops on the pharmacy counter so yeah Saxelby certainly has changed So if you walked over this bridge, the footpath would take you back to the A57. Uh, it would come out just uh, near the, uh, the Broadome turn off. Now, this runs alongside the railway line and there's something here that's changed as well. That uh, fenced off area with the green uh, generator or whatever it is in there, that used to be the signal box and uh, it's clearly been taken down which is a bit of a shame actually because I was looking forward to filming the signal box because it, it, it was quite a quite a magnificent building actually um, so if I can find a picture I'll put it in the video at this point but that seems to have been taken down so yeah how times change also while I'm here I'm onto West Bank now and I'm walking alongside the canal because it runs under the bridge over there and then down the side of West Bank. And this spot right here, or somewhere close to here, I think it may be a little bit further up, but certainly somewhere around this area. This used to be a, uh, a nice spot that my brother used to come fishing. It used to be one of his favorite spots. I believe he still does fish actually, but he doesn't live around here anymore. So where he fishes now, I don't know. This is good to see. I've stood outside Mike Paul's. Now Mike Paul is a little bit of a, a Saxelby institution and apparently he's still going. <laughs> he's a florist and he's been doing the same job for, well, I'm 37, so he's, he's been doing it at least that long. So it's good to see some things haven't changed and he's still here. So this village sign that's behind me has always been here. Certainly for all the years I lived in the village, it's always been here. And in the millennium, they made a new one. And a bit later on, we'll see the new one. It's at the end of Bridge Street, Queensway area. So yeah, there are two effectively signs in Saxelby.
So according to the history trail, this was the post office from 1905 to 1959. But when I lived here, the post office was over the road. It was this building right here. Now, I think the post office now, I, I can't be totally sure. I think the post office now is in with the co-op a little bit further down the road. But uh, I'll have to check that when we get a little bit further around. But certainly when I lived here, this building here was the post office. In fact, there's a history trail marker on that wall. I'm gonna go across there and see what that says. Now, this marker is actually on the side of the chip shop. Uh, it's to do with the railway station, which is where I'm going now, because as you can see, it's up there. And I would imagine that was probably gonna be better off put on the side of the station, but there's a reason probably, I'm not totally sure why it's on the chip shop. I think it's because the station now is not actually a station as such. It's actually uh, private houses. And when I lived here, the station was still very much a station. It was never manned anyway when I lived here, but certainly now it's private residences. So I, I would imagine that putting a, a history trail marker on the side of your house would have needed some kind of permission. But let's have a look at the station anyway, because it's still an active station. You can still catch a train from here at the station house is all residences now. This, this brings back a few memories. There's, there was no waiting room here at this station. So every time I needed a train into Lincoln, uh, occasionally into Gainsborough because Lincoln's that way, Gainsborough's that way, this was effectively the waiting room, this little shelter here. There's no actual waiting room here. And this footbridge is new. <clears throat> To get across the line beforehand, there used to be a little, um, I can only describe it as like a crossing, a foot crossing at the end of the platform over there. If you were disembarking or wanting to get on the platform over the, uh, over the lines here. But apparently now they've built this footbridge. I don't know how long this has been here, but certainly uh, when I lived here, the only way across the railway lines was to uh, cross on foot down there. And here comes a train. Earlier we saw Tony Arbour's butchers. The main butcher in the village has always been Alan Popham. I don't know whether he's still going, but uh, we'll see his shop if he is still going in a while. There was also another butcher called Fred Morley. 
and it was located here at this White House you can see opposite and uh, I always used to hate walking past that house because of the smell he used to keep chickens and honestly <laughs> it was it was the most vile smell you could ever imagine now I'm a country boy as you know but uh, yeah the smell of chickens and the chicken farm that he used to keep God, <laughs> it's one thing I certainly didn't miss when I moved away. Well, you want to talk about change, here's something that's changed. Where I'm standing now used to be a hard surface games area and it used to be walled. There's only one wall left by the looks of it and that's this wall here. It used to be all this all the way around. But the basketball hoops are still here, but the rest of it has apparently disappeared. I used to spend hours in this place playing with a few friends kicking balls about and you know playing football playing basketball that kind of thing but yeah it's uh, it's all gone there's just that one wall remaining and the hoop's still here and there's one at the other end as well but uh, yeah this is a piece of my childhood that's uh, disappeared unfortunately so yeah This is obviously called the War Memorial Playing Field now. Growing up, I just knew this as the wreck and everybody knew it as the wreck. It may still be known as the wreck, I don't know, but certainly it was never called, when I lived here, the War Memorial Playing Field. I can understand why they've called it that now, with the War Memorial at the end of William Street. And a few things have altered here too. We've got a cricket scoreboard over there, that's still the same as always, although I don't believe it's, it's used anymore. Correct me if I'm wrong, Saxaby locals. Do the cricket team still use that scoreboard? Because as far as I can remember, the scoring was always done in the PAV. But they may still use that, I don't know. The park, you can see in shot here, was never there. It was next to the cricket scoreboard over there. And the PAV itself has changed too. Because I believe now, that's where the library is. Now the library used to be on Highfield Road, which is a street we're gonna see uh, in a few moments. So now I think that's the location of the library. And if you can see the top floor underneath the clock tower over there, that's where the youth club was. And when I lived in one of my other houses, which is over there, we'll see that again in a while, I used to go to the youth club up there. There's a set of steps which I believe is still there. So I'm just, just walk on a bit further towards the football goals. I think the steps are still there. Yes, they are. I used to walk up them steps. And I believe it used to be on a Wednesday and a Friday night. The youth club was in the top floor of the pad.
Now, one good thing about Saxelby is the amount of footpaths, these little narrow alleyways there are around the village. But the one I'm stood on now, this runs between the playing field and a road called Manor Road, and you can also get off this onto uh, Otter Avenue. Now, years ago, this never used to be gravel. This path was the one I always used to avoid because it was always, always boggy. Really, really mucky and boggy. It, was, uh, it wasn't maintained like uh, the one I'm going to show you here because this path runs into another one. If you turn right here, this goes to Oakfield, which is where I'm about to go in a moment. But this one was always, you had to be careful. You had to, you had to wear wellies almost to walk down this one. Um, probably one of the longest in the village, but it was handy because it connected the playing field to Manor Road. We're going to Oakfield now, and there's another one of these paths we're gonna use as well in a moment that brings us out back near the old post office. Now this building too, on the end of Skirbeck Drive, this used to be a shop as well, but I cannot for the life of me, and I've been racking my brains while I've been walking around, I cannot for the life of me remember what it was. So this will be my TVI Ask the Local segment today. In around 1995, 96 time, what was this guys? Because I can't remember. proud Lincolnshire boy that I am. It's uh, heartwarming to see the Lincolnshire flag being flown at the anglers, it's fantastic. Uh, it's not very it's not very clear because the wind has obviously furled it around the flagpole but uh, I'll put a picture of the Lincolnshire flag in the video so you can see what it looks like. Now interesting fact, the car park behind the anglers. Now you'll all be familiar with the bank HSBC I'm sure. Now when HSBC was Midland Bank they used to have mobile banking vans and Midland Bank used to park here in the Anglers car park. It was uh, one of the only ways that residents of the village could access um, national banking here really because Saxelby doesn't have its own bank. Um, for the size it is, it's a little bit surprising, but uh, it's never had a branch of any bank in the village. So when Midland Bank were, sorry, when HSBC were Midland Bank, this is where you came if you bank with them to the car park at the Anglers. stable yard. This is new to me because here where we find stable yard which appears to be again another 
plot of new houses, there was a riding school. Apparently it's no longer here. Now this next house I'm about to show you brings back a lot of memories and that's because my dad used to deliver the football pools for Vernon's and for Littlewood's uh, in and around the village and this was one of the houses that we called at. I used to go with him when I was a wee nipper and we always used to call this house Chip Pan Alley because every time we went all you could smell was chips. So that building behind me, that used to be the library before it moved to its current location in the path. It's apparently now a hair and nail studio and it's been extended too because the uh, there is a small building as you can see in the right of the shot here. That's apparently a nursery and preschool now. That never used to be there. A lot of things have changed in this village. It's, it's amazing. I mean I've still got over half the village to go walking around yet and even uh, even not even halfway around so many things that have changed So the building behind me is where the pharmacy moved to after it moved from uh, the end of the high street opposite West Bank and here's the co-op. Now Alan Popham's Butchers, which I mentioned earlier, used to be located inside. I don't know whether he's still here, we'll have a look. Rather disappointingly he's not. His shop used to be on the left hand side as you look at it, here, the, uh, the food store on the right, the butchers on the left, and it's now all the co-op now, so he's not there anymore. I wonder if he's still trading though, <laughs> maybe he's watching this very video. Alan if you're out there watching, are you still going my friend?
Right, so we're coming into the part of the village now where I spent most of my teenage years. I'm currently stood on Western Avenue, which used to be a lot more bumpy than this. It's clearly been gravelled properly now. This used to be a, a very tough road to even walk down, let alone drive down. Now on the right here is Rooks Close. Now when I lived at this end of the village, Rooks Close didn't exist. It used to be a piece of, I can only describe it as barren waste ground really, um, but it used to be a, a, good, a good area to, to play in. And uh, yeah, when I lived up this end of the village, I had a friend that lived on St Andrew's Drive, which is just a little bit further that way. Brooks Close comes off it. And we used to play on this uh, piece of land here. So where I'm heading now is to the end of Western Avenue and then onto Sykes Lane, where we'll see not just one, but two of my former houses. Okay, so when I was at uh, secondary school at Queen Elizabeth's High School in Gainsborough, I spent most of those years living on this road. This is Sykes Lane. And I lived at two houses on this road. And the first of those is right here, number 42. And we stayed there for a while. And then we moved not very far up to number 54. which is a little bit further. There it is. 42 doesn't seem to have changed much, but certainly 54 has, because we used to have a, we used to have a grass lawn here, but obviously now it's uh, been block paved. And we used to live next door to obviously 56 and that was a lady called Vera, Vera Broadbent. Nicest woman you could ever uh, choose to, to meet. In fact, actually, no, no, I'm wrong. No, Vera lived at 58. There was a guy called Colin at 56, if I remember rightly. Yeah, that's right. So Vera was at 58. Nicest woman you could ever choose to meet in your life. Fantastic. Had a good time down here on Sykes Lane. This is where most of my teenage years were, were spent. And this area has changed a lot too. St Andrew's Drive is the same as always, but where I'm about to go now is definitely different to how it used to be. So if you remember earlier, we were talking about Mike Poole and uh, he's still going in the village. He's a florist in the village. We saw his shop earlier. Now, when I lived down here, the grey house you can see in front of us, that used to be Mike Poole's house. Whether he still lives in there, I don't know. It'd be interested to find out if he does. But this whole area up here is the main reason why I want to talk to the camera at this point. Now, the building across to the left is the surgery. It's the village surgery. There are two doctor's practices in there and the surgery never used to be here. It used to be in another building, which we'll see a little bit later. We have to walk up a hill to get to where it used to be. But this used to be TSM, Timber Stair Manufacturers. It was a big warehouse. And as the name suggests, that's what they made. They made timber stairs. And it closed down, I think while I was still living in the village. And uh, I think the surgery was built sometime just after I moved from Sykes Lane up to my final house in the village which we'll see later. So yes this place was definitely different and this whole area behind the surgery these new build houses all of these were developed in the years after I moved away from the village. So we have Woodcroft Road there's Northfield Rise and there's a few others up here too. 
but these are a very recent development but all this area used to be TSM So in the days of TSM, this path that I'm on, this was still here, this links to Church Lane and obviously these houses weren't here but all these uh, bushes and trees and things, these were all still here though, these have been here since the year dot and there used to be some very nice blackberry bushes along here and we used to come up here quite regularly and pick some blackberries because my mother is really good at making blackberry jam and this is uh, where we used to come to get the blackberries they were very uh, they were very good I don't know whether there's still blackberry bushes along here but uh, if I uh, if I spot one I'll be sure to pick up a, a few blackberries while I'm here and uh, see if they still taste as good as they always used to So with Saxelby Ever expanding, behind me is uh, an estate that I'm extremely unfamiliar with. That's the newest part of the village. When I lived here, everywhere beyond the line of those trees was all fields. And now, <laughs> rather ironically, I believe that's called Field Avenue. <laughs> so uh, yeah, nice, uh, nice bit of naming work there, guys. <laughs> but yeah, that used to be all be fields and now it's uh, uh, a rather large housing estate which they appear to still be constructing there's uh, quite a lot of construction traffic around up there right in the distance of this shot you can see St Patoff's church that's really my next destination but just so I don't miss out church road I'm going to walk down this path between Westcroft Drive and Church Road and walk up to it that way and then sort of double back on myself in a few moments by Church Lane and the uh, cemetery. <laughs> Funny moment just happened here. Um, since I've been doing the channel, a few people have stopped me and asked me for directions in various villages. It's just happened just now. This guy was looking for number six Church Road. <laughs> for once, I had the utmost confidence of telling him where to go. <laughs> Well, this is a little bit different. <laughs> you remember earlier I was talking about Alan Popham, the butcher? Well, he used to live in this house here, but this house is, is, is different to what I remember. It didn't used to look anything like this. It's completely changed. Whether he still lives there, I don't know. Now, this tree. I have a funny story about that tree in a few moments, but first we need to head this way.
So the Vicarage Veterinary Centre, that used to be the surgery before it moved down to Sykes Lane in its current location. Now this tree on the corner of Church Lane and Church Road. Now a few years ago, in fact a lot of years ago, at least 20, this tree caused a lot of problems because cars travelling from Church Lane here out onto Church Road, and I can do this because there's no traffic around, struggled to see at this junction if they were turning left and so at a parish council meeting which i did attend when i was a lot younger they were threatening to chop this tree down and of course it's never happened because it's still there but it caused a heck of a row in the parish council meeting and it was uh, it, 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 it got so heated that at one point one of the guys in the meeting decided just to get up and threaten to go home get his chainsaw and go and chop it down while the meeting was still in progress. <laughs> Clearly it never happened, but these are, this is the kind of issue that you've got in uh, villages such like as Saxelby. Clearly, I couldn't come to Saxonbury without, of course, going to the church. Now, this is St. Matolf's Church. I've got a bit of history with this place. I was uh, christened in this place, and my sister was married here in uh, 19... Now then... 19... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say 94. If my sister watches this and says that's wrong, I will kick myself. I should know when my own sister got married, but I think it was 1994. Right, so here's where I double back on myself. I'm not gonna go to the top of Mill Lane or down Sturton Road because up there, there's really just houses and none of them are sort of anything um, special. There is a, um, a care home out there, the old rectory, but uh, um, I think it's much better off. I think I'm much better off to go down this path here, which takes us to Meadow Rise because my next destination really is the school. pretty much throughout the entire time that I lived in the village I had one uh, very close friend who lived right here on Millfield Avenue 
and you look at number 28 which is the house with the grey garage you can see over the road here well, I'm getting close to the end of the video and I was preparing to say in my wrap up at the end that I hadn't seen anybody I recognised and I've literally just seen somebody I've recognised as I've come towards the school. Her name was Harriet and I still talk to her quite regularly as well, um, only via Facebook because Harriet's birthday is one day after mine on the 15th of March, mine's on the 14th and that's sort of, it's become sort of a tradition between us that uh, we say happy birthday to each other every year one after the other. <laughs> it's been good to see someone I know, that's the first person I've seen um, that's uh, it's been someone that I've uh, recognised. Brilliant. Now I'm outside the school, uh, I was going to talk to the camera at this point anyway so I may as well keep the, the film rolling. So this is Saxelby Primary School, this is where I uh, went to school when I was uh, of that age and I was here from let me see, 19, it would have been 1990, I think, something around those, those times. I was born in 84, no, a bit before that, 1988 then, to uh, 1995. Let's see how many of the uh, teachers' names people watching this video might be able to remember. I was there in the days of Mr. Pearson being the headmaster. There was Mrs. Raquel, Mrs. Anscombe, Mr. Ward, and my personal favourite, Mr Vickers, who used to live literally just a few paces away from the school on Willow Avenue. Okay, now we come to the last house that I used to live in in the village. This is where I spent my college years. And as you can see, it's very close to the other side of the school. There's a little path at the end of this road. This is Fosdite Gardens. And if I walk down as far as number 10, that's where I used to live. So here is number 10. That front bedroom you can see on the right, that used to be my bedroom changed a lot certainly changed a lot that house has and I, I think it would be fitting as well at this point to mention a former neighbor of mine his name was John and he lived up here at number 19 now John I don't know whether he still lives there he was an avid football fan and he used to collect all kinds of football memorabilia including programs and mugs and things like that and everywhere he went he used to always buy me a mug from whichever football ground he was in and I used to hang them up in my bedroom around the walls and it was uh, 
it was a sad day when I had to let them go when I moved out, to be honest with you. But I had no space for him where I moved to, so yeah, John was a good friend. I, whether he still lives there, I don't know, but uh, he certainly, if he does, he must be he must be knocking on now. He must be surely into his 60s or 70s now. So yeah, um, and a fun fact about him too, I know I'm, I'm waffling on, I'm sorry. He's, he was a, a fan of Rotherham United, which of course Rotherham is where I live now, so you know, it's funny how things happen. And Forest Night Gardens overlooks the wreck. We're back here at the wreck. There's another entrance to it. There used to be a, uh, a fence all the way down here, but uh, this is all that remains of it, it seems. Just this bit here. There used to be a gate just here. And it used to be good to look out of the, uh, the back bedroom, as it were, at number 10, and watch Saxaby Athletic or Saxaby Cricket Club. I think you can maybe see now why I like uh, villages so much, because this village really does have everything. So I've got one more, uh, one more place really to walk. I'm going to walk down the side of the cricket scoreboard and pa back past the scout hut, which we saw earlier, and out towards the bridge on the canal, because I want to uh, get the new village sign that I spoke about earlier, and then we'll walk back through Queensway to the car, which is parked on Fosdyke Gardens. And that'll be about it. So here we go. Just thought of something else that's quite humorous as I'm walking back towards the canal to finish this video. In the background of this shot you'll see a house on the corner of Queensway. Now that used to be, I don't know whether it still is, used to be the, the residence of a local builder. His name was Bob Charlton and obviously he always got the nickname Bob the Builder for obvious reasons and my dad always used to say that he could never build a straight wall and the ult ultimate irony is that the wall at the side of his house you can see there is absolutely straight as a die. <laughs> so he can build his own wall straight, but he could never build any other wall straight that he ever did. <laughs> I don't know whether that's a lie or whether it's just a myth or whatever, but certainly it's something my dad always used to say that Bob Charlton could never build a straight wall. So Palman Court gets its name because here on Lincoln Road, this is where there used to be a petrol station and it was owned by Mr. Palman. I never knew his first name. I don't know whether it's the same Palman as we saw earlier on the history trail, Ernest Palman. It could have been. It might have been one of his ancestors, but I'm sure you Saxby locals will tell me uh, the name of the guy that owned the petrol station here. But uh, now, of course, it's just all houses, it's Palman Court. And there used to be two petrol stations in the village actually. There was this one and then over the bridge towards Gainsborough on the A57 there's, uh, there was one there too but I know that one's definitely gone because I drove here along that road earlier so it no longer stands. And this is the other village sign. This was erected in the millennium. It's actually got the date of 2001 on it. I don't know whether you remember, at the turn of the millennium, there was a little bit of debate among certain people as to whether 2000 or 2001 was the actual first year of the millennium. Now, in Saxelby, they believed, clearly, it was 2001. Now, I've always been of the assumption that uh, that was wrong, and the millennium actually began in the year 2000, but uh, either way, they put the uh, the new village sign just here and it looks quite nice to be honest with you. I mean the old one in the centre of the village, that's been there since Jesus were a lad. 
and uh, yeah it still looks nice but it's uh, it's a little bit old a little bit outdated and I always thought this one looks a little bit better in all honesty All I've got to do now is walk between Queensway and Fosdyke Gardens along this path here, which links the two, and that will do it for the parish of Saxelby with Ingleby, and with it, the 1000 subscriber special. There was never any doubt in my mind when I started this channel that at some point coming here was going to be a very special video, hence the length. I've spoken a lot more to the camera than I would normally do on any other parish video. And the reason for that is because this place has got just so many memories and it's been fantastic to walk around the entire village and re remember what used to be and, and see how things have changed. And even though I've only seen one person that I know, it, it almost feels like I'm back home. There's always a welcoming feel to this village. I've always liked it. I always used to love living in it. The four houses I lived in and the one in Ingleby, even though I can't remember it, they're all in here and in here. Part of what made me, me, the person I am today. And the great thing about it is that I know everybody that watches my videos feels the same way about their village, about their parish. And this is why it's so great to talk to people that live in these these places that I go to. It's, it's why I like to get all the anecdotes. It's why I like to, to feel almost like part of the community, part of, almost like part of their world. And here, this is, this is, this was my world. This was my world for 20 years. And it's been brilliant to come back. And it's a parish ticked off the list as well. So double whammy for me. Now, of course, there are more villages around here that I know very, very well. In fact, while I'm here, I'm going to be filming two others, two very, very small ones. Um, it doesn't make sense to not do them while I'm in Saxelby. So I'm going to go and do those now, and they'll be up on the channel at some point after this video is out. Um, but yeah, this has been an emotional journey around a village which I called home for the first 20 years of my life. And it'll never leave me. I can, I can, I can move to anywhere in the country. I can go anywhere in the country. And this will still feel special this will still feel like home and i sincerely hope that you've enjoyed this trip around what is effectively my home and what that means is i need to move on and have a look at all the rest of your homes <laughs> so without further ado this has been the parish of saxelby with ingleby and i've been the village idiot thank you so much for 1000 subscribers I'm out.